father, both are in the same subject, same entity. It just how we are looking at that entity. So this looking at this entity is a very, very important thing. And we have to have some kind of knowledge. And as I said, nine, stanza nine and 11, that will be coming up now or solely on partial point of views only. And we will go, we'll be going at deep, deep at the time. Right now, more per yai. A given mode is seen from different angles. And what are those angles? What are those possible angles? So the first one it says, let me just put this one down. <coughs> the first one says, eternal soul substance is pure, that we know about it. And that's why it's a subject of pure point of view. The pure point of view has a subject, and that subject is eternal soul substance. Pure point of view, I'm looking at the absolute pure point of view, that who am I? Then the eternal soul substance becomes pure, because remember, my mode could be impure or pure, and they are transient in nature. But my eternal soul substance is pure, not only today, but it was pure in the infinite past, it will remain pure in the infinite future. So, eternal soul substance is a pure, and that's why it's a subject of pure point of view. Like a Suddha Naino Vishay. Now, this eternal soul substance is a pure, but who knows this purity? The soul substance is inert, it never reacts with anybody, it remains constant, stable, immutable, no relationship with anybody else, and so it is simply sitting there. It has no capacity of knowledge or anything, eternal, pure substance we are talking. So, who is going to know these things? The more, my more. I have a mode, my knowledge mode. Remember, we had a mirror example and that uh, uh, peacock and all those things. So, this mode is a pure like a, a mirror. In that mode, all the alien substances are getting illuminated. At the same time, my eternal soul substance also get illuminated. So, this mode is doing the function of knowing. So now this mode and the knowing that yes, I have a pure, eternal pure substance which is part of my existence. So this mode and the knowing this state, that's why this mode is also called pure. Aryan Bhagwan, the omniscient Lord, Siddha Bhagwan, the liberated soul, they have the pure and pure and pure and pure mode occurring all the time. Forever, they will be in the pure modes all the time. And what is this mode doing? This mode is illuminating the eternal soul substance within. And so, that's why this mode is also called pure, because it did the function of knowing. So the knowledge mode, doing the function of knowing, and it's knowing the soul substance, as well as all the alien objects of the universe. But we put alien objects on the side right now. Our interest is a pure, eternal soul substance. So, this soul substance get illuminated in this mode, and this mode ends up knowing this one. This mode end up knowing subject of pure point of view. That means pariyai is sutta naino vishayche. This is according to stanza number 14. When we come to those stanza 14 and 15, this will be gone in extreme detail. <clears throat> so, the, uh, the, the mode is also called subject of pure point of view. So, this is one, uh, one consideration we have. It. 
because the soul substance is pure, the illumination is pure, and the action occurs in the mode. So we just say that this mode is also pure, and so it's a pure point of view, this mode. Now, we just look at the other angle. Other angle, it says, mode occurring due to association with the alien object is called impure. Remember, this mirror, this mode, this pariah has an illumination of the eternal soul substance. At the same time, it has an illumination of the alien objects of the universe. As long as there is illumination only, there is no problem. But here what happens, with this illumination of the alien object, this mode says, that's me. For example, in my knowledge mode right now, there is an illumination of my body, physical body. And so this mode says, I am the body. It just takes ownership of the body. Even though body is a matter particle and I'm the soul, eternal soul substance with the mode with me, knowledge mode, but this knowledge mode did the illumination of this body and says, I am the body. And that's why this is called impure mode. And so that's why it's a subject of impure substantial point of view. Now, why it's an impure substantial point of view? Asuddha Dramyarthik Naino Vishay, why we can we are saying that? Because substantial, because the mode originates from the substance. This knowledge mode came from the soul substance. The eternal soul substance is sitting there, a knowledge attribute is sitting there, and changes occurring in the knowledge attribute is called mode. And so, this reflection, this illumination of the body or the alien objects of the universe occurring in the pariah, in the mode, because the base is a substance, so that's why it's called substantial. It's called impure because now it took ownership with the alien object. This body is mine. I am hungry. I'm thirsty. I'm happy. I'm unhappy. I'm black. I'm dark. I'm white. I'm tall. All of these things are body related things and more things that I am the thing, all those things. So that's why it becomes impure. Remember, when the mode has an illumination of the but when there is an alien object illumination and I have the ownership on that one, I just said that is me. My house. This is my phone. This is my body. This is my shirt. They are all material object. How can I say they are mine? Because I'm just saying, just my pure, my problem. My mode is creating this problem. And that's why it's called impure. Because it's an association with the alien object. Simply knowing the alien object is not a problem. But here, I put my association, I put my uh, ownership on it, and that's why it is called an impure, substantial point of view. An example our author is given is attentive and non-attentive mode, pramat and opramat modes. Why? Because pramat, pramat means non-attentive from first to sixth spiritual stage, and at the time, there is association, association of the presence of karma. And that's why I have non-attentive phase. Pramatdasa. But from 7th to 14th spiritual developmental stage, in which I'm engrossed within my true nature of the self, and that's called attentive phase, because now I'm attentive to my eternal soul substance. And at that time, 
there are instrumental cause in the form of karma being absent. Remember, there's a tricky thing we are putting up. The first one to six stages is called uh, uh, pramat. It's called pramat means at the non-attentive phase. A non-attentive phase is related with the uh, 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 fruition of the material karma. So now material karma is fruition. I look at it. I make association with that, and so. This is called impure substantial point of view. Now, in, from the seven to fourteen stages, I'm not looking at the alien object. I'm engrossed within myself. And what's happening to karma? Karma are absent. There is no material karma fruition at the time. So absence of karma acts as a, an instrumental cause. Because we are just looking association point of view, presence of karma or absence of karma. Same attentive phase, same attentive phase means seven to fourteen stages. If I'm looking at it with the engrossment within myself and I'm not depend on anybody else, then it's called my own modern. Uh, um, transformation, which is coming in the next slide. See, more of the substance with the impure uh, 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 substantial point of view is known as modal point of view, as it's related to more. A Suddha Dravyarthik Naipon, Suddha Dravya Nidrashtima Pariyayarthika Che. Means, impure substantial point of view which we just saw it before this one this this one impure um, uh, substantial point of view now it is they are looking at this impure substantial point, point of view from different angle and this different angle it says wait a second when you say substantial because more is coming from substance but action occurs in the substance or in the more only so, <clears throat> when the action occurs in the mode, it is called modal point of view. So, this is the same thing we are looking from different angle, and now we just say, yeah, it could be modal point of view also, or it could be impure substantial point of view also. Remember, it depends from what angle we are looking at it. Let's go to the next and then we'll discuss further. Number four. It itself is division of attentive and non-attentive states and therefore is more by itself. As a result, it's also known as a conventional point of view. Now what happens here? The same situation in my mode, there is an attentive phase, 7 to 14 spiritual stages, or non-attentive stage, 1 to 6 spiritual stages, because I'm finding these divisions, I, I said this is my attentive phase, this is my non-attentive phase, and these divisions when I make it, remember it's the same mode, but we are making divisions, and whenever there's a division made, that's called a conventional point of view. For example, uh, um, <coughs> conventional point of view can be seen from two angles. Conventional point of view versus absolute point of view. First absolute point of view will take. Absolute point of view means I perceive the way things are and no question about it. In the sense, I perceive my eternal soul substance and I said, that's my nature, that's my attention, that's my faith, that's what the, uh, uh, my, my attention I'm going to give it. And so, that is pure, uh, that's, a, that's an absolute point of view. But when I see two different things, means it's the same mode. Now, when I'm in this, when the Muniraj is in the sixth spiritual development stage, he is in a uh, uh, non-attentive phase when he is engrossed in the seventh spiritual state 
that is called um, uh, attentive phase. So this we made a division of attentive and non-attentive phases, and then the divisions are made. That's called conventional point of view. Eternal soul substance is never have any division. It's a pure, immutable, permanent, everlasting. So that's called absolute point of view. But in the mode when I start, start making divisions, that is called conventional point of view. Second point, the second nature for conventional point of view is I make two things as one. For example, this is my phone and this is my phone. This is my phone. When I say that, that means phone and me, I put my ownership on it and that's why it is two separate elements to be considered as one is called conventional point of view and in the same indivisible soul substance to make divisions like attentive phase, non-attentive phase, that is also called conventional point of view. Now, <clears throat> question is, why should I go into so much detail about all these things? It just, just gives me a headache, for example. Why should I worry about all these things? Well, just now I was talking to Heman Bhai in Aswadhyay and he is a very, very, very learned person. And what he said was very important sentence he put and that was very important. He says, when you keep on increasing your knowledge base, same mode, I'm looking from four different views over here. When you increase your knowledge horizon, then, then your faith becomes contracted and faith becomes contracted and it tries to come towards yourself. So important, knowledge is important, knowing is important, detail knowing is important because that means I don't have any pitfalls to get stuck somewhere. If I don't know all this partial point of view, um, uh, then what will happen? I may get stuck somewhere. Why you are calling this one as a Vyavar Nai? Why you are calling this one a Sutta Dravyatik Nai? Why you are calling a Sutta? All those questions will come to me and it will confuse me. But when I know this one, when I increase my knowledge horizon, then it will be my faith becomes that much stronger and becomes contracted and ultimately it comes to my eternal soul substance. And that is what I'm looking for. From Here to go. Yes. Is this the same one person that wrote the Gujarati Anuvad of Samaisar, uh, brother of Ben Shri Ben? Is that the same person? Brother who? Brother of? Ben, ben Shri Yes. Actually, this is the one that Gurudev Sri Kanji Swami gave discourses. And so from the discourses, we, we pull all these things out. That's what... No. Uh, is that the same one who wrote the Gujarati Anuvad of Samaisa? No, no, no. That is Heman Bhai is the one he is right now. He is about probably 58, 60 probably. 60, 62 maybe. But uh, the Gujarati Anuvad of Samaisa was done by uh, um, Himad Bhai. Himad Bhai Shah. And Himad Bhai Shah was Ben Siben's brother. So he made the from uh, Prakrit and Sanskrit, he translated all the five uh, paramagams, five spiritual books, and uh, five most important scripture, and he made it in a poem form. And he did an extremely great job by doing that way. And that's why we have those Samasa stanza and everything today, because he did all those work, you know? So it was fantastic work he did, yes. So he, he expired, I think, for, for about, I think about 10 years back. He was about 85 or something like that. Okay, so, so Kiri as I... Go ahead. Means, I have the faith, Mari Sadda, Par Padarth Parshe, the Par Padarth Sadda, Ave Mori Parti Jaise, Mori Parti Jaise, Ane Ek Divase, 
એ શ્રદ્ધા હવે ફોર માંથી સ્વ તરફ ઢળશે જેનું નામ સમ્ય દર્શન આપણે કહીશું એટલે આઈ વોન્ટ ટુ have the faith on my eternal soul substance but i have to know all this uh, uh, partial point of view from different angles and everything right now we are kind of uh, following the book and we are not going in the detail of all this partial points of view but when that comes we have a, a amazing amount of uh, information and that will tell us remember we always say vyavar nahi vyavar nahi vyavarlik mental point of view and that's wrong that's wrong that's wrong conventional point of view is wrong when i'm considering from the absolute point of view when i'm talking from eternal soul substance point of view that conventional point of view becomes uh, 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 secondary and it becomes wrong but conventional point of view is right in its own form for example whose phone is this this is mine because i paid for it i'm paying every month and everything so that's mine it is not chirag it's mine to to make the distinction that i know that this is mine but on the back of the mind i also know that this is a matter particle and i'm the soul part a soul substance matter and soul are entirely different and so there is no relation between those two i know that part and knowing that part i still say that this is mine at that time is important that i knew the partial point of view in detail so whenever there is conventional wisdom going on i mean <coughs> where are you from i'm from new york what is new york and what are you the two separate element but because you are not from phoenix you are not from sorgat and you are from new york so, so to continue day to day conventional thing we continue this kind of uh, 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 conventional point of view for example if somebody tells me today and uh, somebody meets me in a uh, um, uh, temple and uh, before guru des prach and he meets me he says who are you so i'm going to tell him i'm the eternal soul substance i'm existing forever and with my karma fruition and everything just uh uh opunyakera punjati subadeha manav no bolo with my intense auspicious karma i got a human being life and in human life i was given name and that's me if i give them long 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 explanation then he's going to think that my 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 my, my screws are loose in the brain <laughs> so what i will say i am hearing case closed but inside i should know that i am not correct just for the conventional wisdom i just said i am hearing to continue day to day mission but i have to know who am i what is my real nature so these are the thing that it's very important sometimes it happens to us i glad to go to all this details and all the thing what does it help? how does it help me out all this thing yes it does help me out because the big falls occurring in the soul because to go to the eternal soul substance and to direct the faith there there are tons and tons of uh, uh, big falls are coming people will pull you this way and that when everything and in this important human being life i may waste my time so what to waste time and to come to the real nature of the soul i have to know all this thing it's okay if you don't remember if you can't reproduce same thing if i talk to you tomorrow and i just say give you all the four different uh, uh, partial point of view of the about the lord you may not you have to understand the back of the mind that these things do exist so that's why we are going through in detail about these things let's see next let's see this is very important point and right now as i say we are touching kind of surface of it and then walking out but when we do the absolute point of view and conventional point of view we'll go in detail and i can assure you you will have a pretty good understanding what is what is what you know 
because I mean, it took a long, long time for me to understand, and so we will go through it and uh, it will be fun. Okay. If there's any question, not no question, then we can go next. Okay. Why is auspicious, you know, why is auspicious and inauspicious inclination in anime? We already know the answer, so we'll go quickly about it. Physical body is inanimate as it has attributes of matter, touch, taste, smell, etc. We know that part, right? Now, auspicious and inauspicious inclinations do not have touch, taste, smell, etc. attributes of the matter. Auspicious inclination occurs within me. Inauspicious inclination occurs within me. And so when it is occurring within me, they don't have touch, taste, smell type of attributes of the matter. But, but they do not have knowledge within auspicious and inauspicious inclinations. They don't have knowledge within. They don't have capacity to know. Only knowing part is from the knowledge board. Remember, I have a, we have a, as a soul, we have infinite attribute within us. Out of those infinite attribute, only knowledge attribute with its knowledge mode is most important. It's an extraordinary characteristics of the soul because this in a knowledge mode knows the self, means mode knows the mode, and this mode will end up knowing other attributes of the soul. It will also know the alien objects of the universe. So swap or prakasha, self and alien objects illumination that occurs in the knowledge mode only. So from this perspective, that this auspicious you know, inclination, they don't have knowledge within, they don't have capacity to know, and that's why we call that one as an inanimate. Even though they occur within me, but they are not part of my eternal soul substance, they, that's why they are inanimate. For example, as we say, I have an abscess on the hand. This abscess, even though it's occurring within me, but it's not part of my body, it's not part of my healthy body, so throw it out, throw it out, throw it out. That's why it's called inanimate. Okay. Atmana Dharma. Now, it's, now we are going to talk about word Dharma. Word Dharma is used in many different perspectives and we have to be aware of it that what perspective this word is used. So, Component element of the soul in auspicious and inauspicious inclination state. Component element. Dharma means component element. I have infinite amounts of attribute within me. I have infinite amount of components in the form of uh, attributes within me. So that is called dharma. Let's see. From substance, substance perspective, the substance is pure and mode is considered to be secondary in nature. We know that part very well. Now, but from modal perspective, mode itself, either pure or impure, has its own independent existence. I have the, the Gosalia family with me. I'm the owner of the Gosalia residence. With the, my, my three kids were growing up, my mother was there, wife is there. We are individual people in there. And everybody had that independent existence. Sure, I want to have my son go through highest grades in the school, but he's interested in the tennis. He's interested in other, other, other activities. So he has independent existence as long as he observes the Gosalia family's rules and regulation. So within that contact, he is free to do whatever he wants to do. The mold is a part of a soul substance and attributes and an infinite mold. So this mold has an independent existence. So soul substance may say, hey mold, behave like this. Mold says, no. I am my own independence, I'll do whatever I want to do. 
We all live in the state of United States of America, and there is a um, president is um, um, and uh, the, the food department came up with the food pyramid that you have to eat so much meat and so much uh, vegetables and so much grains and so much fruits and everything. I have my independence. As long as I observe the rules and regulation of the country, I have my own independent existence. I want to go on fasting. I can do that. Um, um, you want to do varshita, one varshita, second varshita. You have, you have independence. I want to eat 10 times a day. I have independence. I don't want to eat meat. I am independent. So within the whole schema, the board has its own independent existence. Now we can go further. From dialectic relativism, Syadvat Apeksha. Now this, is, this is word is very important. Dialectic relativism means Syadvat. Syad means from certain perspective. Word Syad means certain perspective. Vat means to speak. I am man. When, when they have, all the women are present and everything, and I want to uh, uh, give my my uh, 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 my nature, who am I? I'm a man. Or when, when I'm with a, with a different crowd, I'm Indian. When I'm here in the soldier, well, I'm from USA. So, Syad means from certain perspective, from certain path means to speak. So, Syad means how to express in a different manner. And the principle of this one is a, 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 a multiplicity point of view. Anekan. Anekan is a principle. And Syadvad is expression of those principles. So both the words basically say Anekan means nature of the soul. So, so from uh, substance perspective, it's, a, it's a eternal. From moral perspective, it is transient. And so that's a, 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 a multiplicity point of view. Transiency and permanency is present in the same soul substance at a given time. Now, when I'm expressing those things, that's called Syadva or dialectic relativism. So purity of eternal soul substance and impurity of the mode, both are component element means dharma of the soul substance. Here we are talking dharma basically. What's a dharma? Means component element. Pure, pure mode or impure mode. It's from a modal perspective. Transiency, it's a modal perspective. And I am eternal soul substance, which I'm permanent. So permanency and transiency both are present in the same soul substance, and that is called soul substance is dharma, means component element of the soul. So that's a one definition, right? Second one. <coughs> dharma means righteousness. Means aje me dharma karyo, aje me upvas karyo, aje me puja kari, aje me bhav sara rakhya. That's called righteousness. So. <coughs> Impurity of the auspicious and inauspiciousness occurs due to association with the alien objects and are censurable. He, upade, me. Those principles. So, impurity of, of the impurities of the auspicious, inauspicious modes occurring within me because of association with the alien object is not to be considered. It's to be discarded. I don't want to have it, I want to discard those things. So that's called hey. Then one needs to respect the eternal true nature of the self, means upade. I want to respect, I want to obtain, I want to put my attention to the eternal source of stuff. So that is to respect or upade. Then with attention focused to eternal true nature of the soul. One is able to discard impure, impure inclinations. Remember, I want to remove the darkness. I want to remove darkness, darkness, darkness. And if I continually put my attention to darkness alone, it's not going to go away. I want to remove darkness. Let me light with a matchstick. 
little light comes out and whole darkness disappears. As we said one time to a few, few classes before, there was a case going on for the darkness and light and the darkness gets lost out of the light and says that, uh, you know, this, this guy is bothering me. So there was a case going on and so now the judge says, okay, darkness, present yourself. And darkness says, you know, sir, this guy, this light always bothers me. Wherever I am there, he comes and he drives me nuts and he just throw, throws me out. So the judge said, that's right. Very good. So light, what's your problem? Why do you bother him? Light says, I've never seen this darkness. I'm the light. I've never seen this one. So how can I bother somebody? Same way. I have to remove my impure inclinations. I have to put my attention to eternal soul substance and that will remove my impure inclinations. And this is known as righteousness. To take my attention away from the alien objects of the universe and bring the attention to my eternal soul substance, it's a righteousness. It's a dharma. When do I do the dharma? When do I do the righteousness? When I take my attention away from those things and bring it to eternal soul substance. That's a real thing. That's a right thing. Now, I just say, oh, you know what? I do the dharma. I give donation. I give charity. I go to temple. I do worshipping. And all. all. They are not called righteousness. Righteousness is the one in which I brought my attention to my eternal soul substance. I realize my soul substance. I experience my soul substance. I have the right faith to my soul substance. I have the enlightenment of the soul substance. I get deeply engrossed within my soul. That's a righteousness. So when is this righteousness starts? From the fourth spiritual development state. Because until that time, my attention is drawn to alien objects of the universe. Now, when the righteousness occurs, which now I brought my attention to eternal soul substance, and as a result, the mode coming out is a pure mode, that's called submission mode, that's called self-realization mode, that's called um, 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 enlightenment mode, whatever name you to be, and so dharma will start, real dharma will start at that time. So, question comes, then shall I not do anything? Shall I not go to temple? Shall I not do the worshipping? Shall I not do all these things? No, I got to do those things. But I should know that that is not the righteousness. I'm on the path to the righteousness. But that is not the righteousness. So I have to keep that one in my understanding. There is nothing, nobody says that you stop going to temple, you stop doing worshipping, you stop doing puja, you stop doing the charity work and everything. What will you do then? Would you do the inauspicious work? No. Religion does not say you do inauspicious work. But it says when you do auspicious activity of donation, charity, compassion, uh, 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 and um, um, uh, going to temple, worshipping and all the things, you have to do, but that is not my dharma. That's not my righteousness state. That understanding has to be there in my mind. So that's another meaning of dharma. Now, so right faith is generated, wrong faith dissipates, and that's a real uh, righteousness. Then, third thing is called retention ability. That is also called dharma. Kiri ah. yeah. um, I have a question. I don't know if I'm going to be able to pose it properly, but tame, tame, try to understand. There uh, recently called Swadhyayama comment say etla mate hu aap puchu chu ke je loko aa badi activities dharma anusthan kare chhe to e understanding thi e loko eu ke chhe ke ame bhagwan ni puja karva kai jaiye chhe to amara atmarth atma na lakshan ame bhagwan ni puja kariye chhe okay so the statement was ke atma nu atma ni to okhan chhe ni to pachi atma nu laksha kev rite the See, that's what it is. That's so, so Maru, Maru, Maru uh, another point I want to add to is okay. So, Shubha Pravruti na karvi. So, then that leaves me example for Upwas. So, I will not do the Upwas, but I will eat 
whatever how many times i want to eat during the day so it is upas considered shubh and then eating is ashubh so is ashubh being done atmarth hai tumhe maro confusion samjho chho i understand see remember that you can one can do only three things to get and gross in the soul subtle to get and gross in the innate nature of the soul to do the auspicious activity to do the inauspicious activity only three things i can do i can't do any four things now i don't have innate nature of experiencing means i have not brought my attention to the eternal soul substance that means my attention is directed to the alien objects of the universe now with those things i have to do only two things either i can do auspicious thing or i can do inauspicious thing now tell me who will say that don't do auspicious thing and do inauspicious thing means don't do this thing means you do this one who is going to say that means so do- that is my question they they don't say do inauspicious things yeah. but they will still negate by saying don't do upas don't do the auspicious thing so yeah. that if you don't like you said If I don't do the auspicious thing, the left is an inauspicious thing. Yes, and see, remember, nobody in this whole world will say you go and do the inauspicious thing. You do, but auspicious thing is a dharma. That idea has to be taken out of my mind. I, I, okay. I'm going by doing the upas by doing charity by doing donation by doing austerity and everything by doing worship and everything what i'm doing is i'm trying to stay out from the inauspicious thing number one and when i'm on this path then i keep on doing further and it gives me more understanding for looking into my eternal true nature my aim has to be eternal true nature my aim doesn't have to be uh, i have to do so many upas i have to do so much worshiping and everything no you have to do it but your idea that i am doing right thing that has to be born in my mind that well my faith says that what am i am doing is good thing i'm doing for my soul and everything how can i be doing charity for example i donated money today did money belongs to me they are not part of me they are the matter objects and they have the uh, 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 dynamism property so they came to me now they went out of me in the form of charity or in the form of throwing it out in a wrong way so number one when i do the charity i'm doing something great that the feeling has to be important the need to say that okay it's a auspicious thing i did but that's not part of my soul it it keeps my mind and heart in a proper fashion and ultimately it helps me to go towards my eternal source but who is my or i mean atma lakshya kare what is atma what yeah, what is atma lakshya kid right exactly that's what i want to what is atma lakshya how can i do atma lakshya if i don't know the atma yes that's what we that's why knowledge is so important remember from the one mode alone we look to four different angle so when i gather all this knowledge and everything and now i try to imbibe on me and i say no my true nature is to have eternal soul substance attention my faith has to be directed to the eternal soul substance and my understanding is there once i have understanding i will most likely go on that path let's say my gps says that this is the way to go and i start going in the wrong direction what will happen when well, i didn't follow the advice once i have the knowledge that this is my eternal this is my uh, true nature then what do i have to do it automatically has to come and that is called swadhyaya that is called real uh, understanding people can know everything people can keep on speaking everything they can give lecture like everything and in their personal life you don't see any mildness at all 
As soon as Swadhyay is over, he just talks so bad thing about so many people, you know, opinion for whole world and everything. That means he has not digested the knowledge. Knowledge means gathering the knowledge, listening, reading, writing, and watching, and all the thing. Now I try to imbibe on me, and I have to put myself in that direction. I have to be that particular person that now. My sole aim in the life is to have eternal soul substance faith, and so uh, people can speak anything. So speaking is not important. Action is more important. You know, you did the uh, 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 let's say that one did the uh, uh, fasting for seven days, eight days, nine days, twelve days, fifteen days, one month, and everything. And now I take pride that you know what I'm the greatest of the great. I did thirty 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 days of fasting. So what? Even the snake, when he goes in hibernation in winter time, he he goes on no, fasting stage for six months. So he has a six months of mass cover. Is that important? No, important is with my understanding when I do it. So that's what is important. You know, I hope that that answers your questions. You know. <clears throat> yeah, it does. Yeah. Okay. So we can just take this dharma as a retention ability. There's another meaning of dharma. Dharma means word use here means vastu e rakheli, vastu e dhari rakheli yogi that the dharma kya baat. Retention ability of a thing is known as dharma. See, there's a third meaning of dharma. Retention ability. The eternal soul substance has maintained its permanency, and the mode has maintained its impurity. Both are retention ability of the particular entity. So this is also called dharma. So same for the three different places use three different way that meaning I should have to have it. If I just make literally meaning dharma is righteousness, dharma is righteousness, and then it won't fit in this definition. So I have to be careful. I have to have broader understanding of this thing. And it all depends on your ability to understand and digest. And remember, we all have ability to understand and digest because if I'm doing particular work right now, then I put my undivided attention to that work. If I'm doing angioplasty and stent and everything, I don't think about food and everything. I'm concentrating exactly how to take care of this patient. If you're working in the lab, you exactly put the concentration to find the lab finding and do everything. When Ankit has to do the eye operation, he doesn't go in the la la land and thinks that, oh yeah, I'm gonna watch the movie and everything. No, he concentrates on the work. So I have a concentration ability. Now, I just have to redirect that ability towards my eternal soul substance. I know how to drive. I started driving with an old clunker car. Now that I have money, more money, and I bought a brand new Toyota. And thereafter, I bought Mercedes. I brought Lexus. I know the driving. So driving is important. Then any car I can drive, same way here, I have a concentrating capacity within me. It just depends where do I want to put the concentration to the alien objects of the universe, or do I want to bring it to myself? So those are the things I have to keep in mind. You know? Okay. Uh, okay. So you know what? Maybe we may have to stop here because uh, 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 right now Buddha is it will be starting uh, within ten minutes. So I have to run there. Okay. So. Okay. If there is any question, we can just entertain the question right now. No, no question. And are there are there shibi che? No, it's like yeah. I mean, this uh, Sonkar, it's like three times a day. Gurudev's pravachans are there. I mean, uh, the the okay. uh, Sonkar, Kanti Swami's okay. pravachans are there. And then okay. he sits sit down with Hemant Bai, and uh, we do the swadhyay and everything. So practically, whole day goes, you know, uh, in the in this in this uh, good atmosphere, you know. Very nice. I wish I was there. <laughs> no, you are doing great there. Also sitting there. Don't worry about it. You know. Yeah. Yeah.
Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. and, and you know, okay. this is the six times I know I keep on telling all the time because it's so great and so detailed. That's why we are taking our own time. And by now, I think we have dissected it from all different angles that now we have pretty good idea. As you say, what's Atma Laksh? We have some idea right now. And with this base, when we go further up in the different stanza, that will make us kind of become solid on our knowledge. Once we are solid in the knowledge, then automatically the behavior will come. My faith will get reduced from the alien object and it will get redirected. In this time, for sure, because we are born to get the experience with the soul, we are going to get it. We have the confidence, right? Yes. If I take your time, we are not in any hurry. Uh, we are enjoying the, the yeah. Gatha, Chakti Gatha we are enjoying. So please don't feel that you are taking time. No, 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 take no, your no, time. No, 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 no. Uh, thank you for your patience. No, no problem. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jai Jai Jinendra. Jai Jinendra. Yeah, we'll see you next week, okay? Okay, thank you. Okay.